You are listening to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. And of course, in today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by viewers and listeners just like you. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion where we talk about what's happening in the world and what's happening in our world. And we also mention our sponsors. Today's intro portion was 39 minutes. After that, we get into answering all those fitness questions. So we open up by talking about uh, today's morning workout. We've been working out in the morning a lot, and today was a little different. So we talk about the differences mm. in today's workouts. Justin a little more was, angsty Justin today. was angry. Yeah. Then we talk about a new product from one of our favorite uh, sponsors, uh, Ned. Ned makes high-quality hemp oil products and much more. Go check them out. Go check them out on their website, helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump. You'll get 15% off your first order. Uh, then we talk about toilet paper hoarding and what that says about your personality. There was actually a study on this. <laughs> we talk about the CEO from my pillow. You know, that guy that hugs his pillow in the commercials. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah, and we little, talk about how strange. Trump pardoned little Wayne uh, as he was walking out. <laughs> that sounds, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, and uh, what we, our predictions for what we think he's going to do now that he's out of the white house. Um, and then we talk about all the calories you burn when you're having sex. We actually know there's a number yeah. that people tend to burn when they're doing the deed. Get out there, start tracking. Then we talk about the new videos we're putting up on YouTube that show behind the scenes here at Mind Pump. It's on Mind Pump TV on YouTube. Go check it out. Find out why we're so cool. Yeah. Uh, and then we brought up- proclaimed We brought up another one of our sponsors, Organifi. Um, Doug likes to use a lot of their products. So do I. Organifi makes organic vegan-based supplements. Everything from protein powders to green powders. Go check their stuff out. They're a great company. You can go to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I dot com forward slash mind pump. And then use that code mind pump and you'll get 20% off anything in their store. After that, we got into the fitness questions. So the first one this person likes to work out six days a week, uh, but we told them to work out three days a week. What can they do on those other three days? They love the gym. Yeah. The next question uh, this person wants to know what signs to look out for that might, that, that'll tell them that they might be overdoing it in the gym. The third question, this person says, look, I know building muscle speeds up the metabolism, but what else can I do to speed up my metabolism? And then the final question, this person uh, wants to know if there's any advice that we have for women who know they should be eating more and lifting weights, uh, but they keep getting advertised to do the opposite. So what can they do? Um, also, all month long, we've put together a bundle of workout programs and nutrition guide for people who are getting started in fitness. Okay, so this is great for those of you that are beginners or those of you that have, that have not worked out for three to six months. This is a phenomenal bundle of programs for you. So here's how you would follow all the programs in this starter bundle. You'd start out with MAPS Starter, the best program to get started with. That'll, that'll take you through about two or three months. Then you go to MAPS Anabolic. Now you're really building muscle. Now you're really building strength, speeding up the metabolism. Fat loss really starts to kick in here. That's an additional three months of working out. Then you have MAPS Prime. Now, MAPS Prime helps you train your body so that you don't hurt yourself. That is what you do before you do the other workouts. You you do what are called 15-minute, 10 to 15-minute priming sessions before your workouts. So it's very individualized with that. And then we have an intuitive nutrition guide because nutrition is the other side of the coin. This teaches you to listen to your body's own signal. So it's not a diet. It teaches you how to eat better for yourself. Now, if you got all these programs individually at retail, you'd spend over $340. But in this bundle for January, we're offering all of them together for 80 bucks. That's it. One time, 80 bucks, get lifetime access. You also get 30 day money back guarantee. Go check them out. All you got to do is go to mapsjanuary.com. That's the word maps, M A P S, january.com. And it's t shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Yes, indeed. We have seven winners this week four from Apple Podcasts, three from Facebook. The Apple Podcast winners are LHLH14, M Folks, Jump River Mike, and Human Gumbo. And for Facebook, we have Elijah, Christopher Finn, Marisol Azalea Diaz, Stella Bukes Edwards. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Human gumbo shrimp. This morning was interesting. Um, we all had the same idea. You guys, you guys know what I'm talking about? 
Mm. What was that? Oh. We all put our headphones on and, and listened to our own music. Oh, uh, well, before, oh, yeah. before you got in here, Doug asked if we could keep the music down because Brie was in the front office. Yeah. Oh, She's doing her school. Weird. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't know that because yeah. I, I, I had that idea in my He's head. He's like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah, We're all the same age. I wanted to do this. I feel like everyone's copying me again. <laughs> no. No, I did it because uh, because to, I have to reduce my intensity on one or two of my workouts, and I can't do it. If we're all listening to the same music and, uh, yeah. and like in the same energy. Oh, that's See, interesting. Today I needed to pull some intensity. I had like, I thought, I had like not, no fumes. So, so I was afraid to talk to you, Justin, because <laughs> you, you didn't say hi. You came in. Uh, you started working out. I know. I was kind of on a mission. And I thought like you were mad about something. I'm like, well, I don't know if you got in a fight or something. No, last no. Like I had to to summon that, uh, you know, that, 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 that anger. Uh, I needed something. I needed something to kind of drive the workout because I had literally nothing. Like in one of those days, you just don't have any energy coming into it. It, and mm. I'm just like, no, it's going to suck unless I do something. I saw you carrying those uh, heavy ca- uh, purse carries. Yeah. You were doing I that. Did. I think those are called suitcase I have to get carries. ready. Oh, yeah. They look like purse carries. Me, does it? <laughs> <laughs> like, we yeah. all know who's most likely yeah. to have a purse at them. <laughs> this, yeah. this is very true. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. lie, bro. <laughs> yeah, you would do it very proudly, I would, too. No, I would it's cool. Not. No. This is cool. It's I know the diapers. I never jumped on that trend right now. With it's The man purse? Yeah, no, it's just not my style. Yeah. What about the- duffel bag or a backpack guy. The fanny pack was a thing. was a thing. For a while, I rocked that the fanny pack. Yeah, but I was fourth grade. I didn't. Oh, I, didn't yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, do I had the, one. I had the second like a wave. Another one. I passed on the second wave. I, I know they're they're super yeah. convenient. I wish they would be. I mean, I, I wish people did wear them, right? Because it's like you got everything right there. I guess. Yeah. I mean, do you really? I mean, do you carry makeup with you or something? What do you carry mm. that you need like a fanny pack? I supplements. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good point. Yeah, you I'm do just, have like you do carry a, a freaking Lululemon bag. Access around, to like, pills. Just pills. Wherever. I'm just ready to you know for any occasion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Adam sneezed. Yeah. Here's a something for your like, like system. maybe. You just, can or we something. actually, actually, could you grab that? Can we go no. through? Please, come on. No, we can't. Come on, don't be, a, don't no, be that can't. way. We can't do. No, it. no, no. Get, come on, pull no, it out. No. Only we only talk about sponsors. Why? What do you got in there? That's private, huh? Like, what do you, you don't have to tell the brand. We don't have to rep them. Let me see what's no, in it. No, come on, come no, on. No, no, do it for the audience. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you must <laughs> hey, have. Hey, wait, hey, now I'm really curious what's in there. That's only for the private forum. Yeah, I'll do it for the private forum. Get out of here. Come on. You won't pull it out on air. No. Why is there? Wow, some, what are you talking about? Yay. What's in there? It's what do you mean? It's shit you see me pull out all the time. Well, I don't. Nine actually, out of ten things in there have to do. You're with always putting stuff health. in your mouth that I'm not paying attention. I feel attention like you to. do better with a trench coat. You know, you just have them all just like ready to go. And just, like, just just pull distribute it. Out it. And they just yeah. they fly out yeah. at, at people. <laughs> I yeah. really didn't care that much, but now I really care. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll you show you later. Wow. Yeah. You yeah. won't do it on air. No, What's I don't want. What do you think, Justin? What do you think? Send there's a couple bitcoins in there. There's there's there's, there's toys. The, Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, the, there's stuff. The Russian dossiers in there. You don't want. You know, I don't want to be seen. It's in there. All the Epstein <laughs> Island uh, logs. Information and on in there. there. <laughs> on what actually happened? Wow. Yeah, alien stuff. You know, cool. keep, it, keep it secret, bro. It is. It, it is not on me, dude. I know no. it is a big bag, and you do have a lot of a lot of uh, jars inside there. Yeah, I know. So, but I do. Uh, I do appreciate. <laughs> I like the mystery, though. Everybody's yeah. gonna be like, "What the fuck?" I oh, know. Man. I am now. I actually didn't care that much. I was just kidding around. But now that you're like so private about it, I'm no. really curious. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll do it if if people really want to know. So we'll see. Well, I want to. I want to see what people think and see like exactly. You know, like they have to make some cool memes and, and let's see what's in Sal's bag. Well, mm-hmm. so I think we should at least do. This then, so if you won't give us what's in there, you should at least give us a count. So then the, our forum can go like, you, if it's ten bottles, they have to guess what ten bottles are. Ten in is probably a good guess. Hmm. I think yeah. I would say that. Ten is a good guess. Ten, it's ten plus. It looks like ten to twelve. There's maybe. probably stuff in there I haven't used in a long. There's emergency stuff. No, in there I don't too. care. That's that's not the point. Okay, we're not going to. Don't make else. an excuse. Is there for anything real? exotic? Um, do I have anything there that's exotic? Yeah. No, like sex. Panther. I mean, that. See, here's yeah, like a problem. Astro glide yeah. inside. See, you guys, everything's it's, exotic. If it's not vitamin C or protein, <laughs> you're like, wow, what's that? That's weird. What is that? Yeah. Like the magnesium? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Is that what, from, what is that? So, is that from the jungle? Of, <laughs> some, some kind of space mineral? Yeah. What is that? Did, hey, didn't speaking of magnesium, didn't our partners Ned just start a, a brand where they, or I mean, a new product line that yeah. has got magnesium? Yeah, in yeah it? magnesium, what, theanine, GABA. So, school me on what what this. It's their newest for sleep. Oh, it's all for sleep too. Yeah, so for relaxation, at, well, relaxation or sleep. So mm-hmm. GABA um, is a neurotransmitter mm-hmm. that helps induce this kind of relaxed state uh, in your mind. Theanine, you guys know about theanine on its own. It's a natural, it's an amino acid. It's a natural anxiolytic. And then uh, magnesium. And a lot of us are, especially athletes or people who work out a lot, are deficient in magnesium. Yeah. And so uh, and one of the side effects of being deficient in magnesium is feeling 
anxious or stressed or whatever, especially if you're stressed, by the way, your body depletes magnesium. So mm. that's one of the products uh, that they have. So they got a bunch of new stuff uh, cool. coming out. Now, yeah. is it uh, only for right before you go to bed or could you take it like, because it's got do theanine it. and stuff like that, why not take it right to a cup of coffee or nitro? I like how we do that. Okay, so now you're talking, bro. Yeah. yeah you pay attention sometimes. I do listen. You balance it, it out, man. You I take was, the ride a little yeah. further I wasn't out. like Justin in school. Justin yeah, no. was like picking, his, no- about picking his nose in the back and shooting wads. Yeah, I made a career off of thinking about like crazy crazy nonsense yeah, so. yeah writing <laughs> right writing, yeah. writing novels that's all, right all of us made a podcast yeah. out of it yeah. oh my take God. that mrs robertson no yeah combining yeah, uppers yeah. and yeah. lowers yeah. Uh, uh, uppers yeah. and downer that's yeah. a classic yeah. stack right now <laughs> you're a dreamer <laughs> no, no no gaba theanine theanine in particular you combine that with caffeine it's it really i'm telling you enhances the caffeine in a very smooth focused way well i don't so what i get out of it because we have this right so we keep theanine on top of the uh nitro the nitro my like cold brew right so we have that in the studio and you got us doing that. And what I noticed from it is sometimes, I mean, especially if I did like coffee before I got here or maybe a pre-workout and then I do nitro on top of that, it really makes me jittery. It's, it's mm-hmm. I mean, I know mm-hmm. my body's going, okay, Adam, that was more than enough. But when I pair it with a theanine, it doesn't do that. Mm-hmm. It makes just a real smooth feeling. So I feel like I get the energy from it without the jitters at all when I'm it, pushing it. That's what I mean. It enhances it. Oh, it gives you that. more of the good, less of the bad yeah. from caffeine. So yeah. I so I could put that together, right? So mm-hmm. that wouldn't be a bad supplement to take right after the nitro? It's interesting. I'd like to see what what GABA's com- uh, would be, how, how that would pair with caffeine. I'd have to look into that, um, but I would definitely try it. Mm. In fact, you give me <laughs> give us ideas. Uh, Maybe yeah. I'll try that out tomorrow <laughs> and see what happens. No, I always do caffeine with theanine. I never do caffeine without it. I don't, I, you know, caffeine by itself fine. Actually, I crash. Well, you're, you're really sensitive to it. I also crash faster without the theanine. I do the up yes. and the push. Yes. Yeah. And then when I do the theanine with it, it lasts much longer. Then if you throw some uh, alpha GPC or some choline, now you're talking. Now mm-hmm. you've got some some good now, stuff. Now I'm ready to party. Yeah, sprinkle a little cocaine and then uh, <laughs> Whoa, just kidding. Hey. Next level. You don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. Yeah. Everybody, before I get some, before I get kicked <laughs> off the <laughs> the air because they're coming after everybody. Yeah, there's kids watching. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. So hey, by the way, um, Adam, I found an interesting story on people who hoard toilet paper. Shut you. You I, did I swear not. To God. I'm going to read you a quote. Which was uh, half the nation, right? I mean, that was like the hysterical well, so, response. Yeah, and so this 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 article is literally studied the the toilet paper uh, you know, behaviors of uh, of people and how it correlates to other things. Yeah. Now, so, is this like because of this year or is this like in general? Well, it had to do with this year. Okay. So, I mean, you know, I should pull up the whole article mm. because I just pulled up a quote from it. But I'll read you the quote because I don't feel like looking for it. It says, people who feel more threatened by COVID-19 and rank highly on scales of emotionality uh, and conscientiousness. So people who are very emotional but also conscientious are more likely to stockpile toilet paper. In March of 2020. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So random, dude. Yeah. I don't know. Are you, would you say you're emotional, Adam? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? Bro? I'm not no emotional. highs, no lows. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, not at all. Super I, even. I, <laughs> am I that inconsistent? I'm consistent. Get out of here. Consistently. Again. Well, we know right yeah. when you walk in the door. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, is, yeah. Is it that obvious, really? Yeah, yeah a little bit. <laughs> what are my signs when I come in there? Get the fuck out of here. You can't see it like huh? that. Huh? Oh, my God, bro. Come I can on, see dude. it in your face. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's going to be a fun day today. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a lot of these noises. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he rubbed like, my oh, ear. I know what's he's, he's rubbing today. my ears. He's, uh, he's, he's in a happy He's mood. happy. He's uh, light, gonna, lighthearted today. A sponsor must have resigned. Uh, uh, yeah, today's yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to have to work on that. Yeah, anyway, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, hey, speaking of that, I was talking to uh, one of our partners uh, yesterday and um, uh, Pluto Pillow. And the, did you guys see the news about my the my pillow CEO guy? Uh, you guys he, just told me about that. He got yeah. pulled off of uh, was it Bed Bath and Beyond and someone else? Yeah, Crazy. Bed Bath and Beyond was it Amazon? He was too? a Trump supporter. I guess. Yeah, he was like really vocal about it. So they said, eh, yeah. "Sorry, not going to let you." Hey, uh, you know what? It's, it's free market. There's a market response. Yeah, right. uh, so and you know it's sm- so here's the thing. This is what's interesting to me, right? There's two sides to this. On the one side. If you're an outspoken kind of celebrity CEO, mm-hmm. sometimes it pays off big time. Uh, Elon Musk is a great example of that. I think uh, part of the reason why Tesla does so well is because Elon runs it and he's uh, like a celebrity with, you know, uh, Steve Jobs was a- another example of that. Now, these, of course, Apple is already a profitable, great company, mm-hmm. but, you know, Steve Jobs himself became kind of that personality. Yeah, he's very charismatic. But it can go in the opposite direction. You know, when you become, when people kind of know your, your opinions, uh-huh. can, fuck you. 
And oh, that's what yeah. happened. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. his company yeah, was backfired. crushing. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting feeling, too, that you get from that, right? Like, I was like, I, when I read that, I was like, oh my God, that's such bullshit, right? But at the same time, too, I would never be pro putting any sort of laws in place that wouldn't allow those companies to do that. You're a private company. You're, well, you're not a private company. And in, in the case of Bed Bath Beyond, it's not private, right? They're publicly traded. Yeah. But I mean, they're private in the sense that they're, they're not government owned. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you should have the right to, you know, refuse service or whatever to anybody. So I do, I do believe that. I don't think there should be a law in place that forces them to sell their You products. know what's interesting about this too is I wonder if you'll get a response on the other end. Right. Uh, remember? Was it- well, the reason why I brought it up was actually what it ended up doing was blowing up the competitor. Uh, so right. they were, I didn't, I actually didn't even know about it. I'm on the call. We're talking about 2021 and like advertising. And I always ask, you know, hey, how'd it go last year? And how's things, how's business going when I'm catching up with the CEOs? And she was like, Oh, well, you know, the whole, you know, and she brought it up like I should know and I didn't know. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, like playing it off like <laughs> I did. And then right away I'm like Googling it, like looking it up. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't know this. I didn't even know that was a big deal. And mm-hmm. because they are like a direct competitor to them, their business exploded because of of the MyPillow wow. news. So have, wow. So do, do you ever watch the MyPillow commercials? No. So he's, I mean, I don't know the guy, but I, it was always a little weird. Like he'd, he'd hug the pillow while he was talking. You never <laughs> so, saw it? Okay. So not only, this was like a conversation this, this weekend with my uncle and I. So he uh, was hired. So my uncle was hired by another guy who wanted to compete with my pillow. And they were doing all the advertising and my uncle was trying to sell him on like, you know, the the family image and, and women and children and this that. And the guy was so hard up that he wanted to be in the video hugging the pillow because <laughs> he is famous for that scene. So he did a so my pillow did that. See, look, yes. Wait. <laughs> oh so, my god. <laughs> so he did it on a I want okay, and I'm I'm probably gonna get some of this wrong. He's got but a great mustache. Look at that. He did that on like a up until this point, his business wasn't really taking off. And then he had like a uh you know, an infomercial or something mm-hmm. where he did that and he hugged the pillow. And then the business went crazy. What? Yeah. How so that's silly as that. Yeah. So that's now crazy. all the now all the commercials, everything's tied around that. But leading up to that, he hadn't really made a big splash yet. And then he did this whole thing where he squeezed and hugged the pillow, and it went bananas. You got to take like one of those characters, like you ever seen Paul from the Diamond Center? You know? Oh like, my God! Yes. <laughs> he'd like like all those in like the warehouse guy. Like I, I miss those like really like cheesy old yeah. commercials. Yeah, Hair Club for Men. Yeah, yeah. I'm not just the owner. I'm, yeah, I'm the also I'm also, a member. Yeah. I. You know what? Uh, you got to take it to the next level. If you come up with a pillow company, I guess you got to kiss it next. Uh, yeah. I guess yeah. Well, so. you can hug the other pillow. But look at this. He's all petty. He's sniffing yeah. it. You, I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> though. I, I knew none of that. My pillow smells the yeah. best. Ooh. I bet that would crush. <laughs> <laughs> have have Biden be your like pillow. <laughs> have, have Biden be your, your your guy selling it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. sn- he sniffs our pillows more than. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys see the Bernie Sanders memes going all over the place. I love it. That's oh, pretty yeah. funny. He, he looks so upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's picture. just cold, and you know he's trying to get some warmth. Yeah. Just, the internet wins yesterday, I for yeah. sure on that one. I Inter- thought that was pretty. Internet funny. does that a good job. Remember funny. that episode of uh, Big Mouth where the dude, the kid, it's like has sex with the pillows? Did yeah, you guys watch that episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah. yeah. That was, well, that's like that an was, ongoing that thing. Was very, yeah, like, like graphic. That that car- that show goes far. Oh, it's yeah, it's it's hard. Like, I, and I'm all for like the jokes of it, and everything, but it actually it made me uncomfortable. It's yeah, but sense. tell me, tell me though, if you were 17, that would be your show. Probably. Uh, I mean, th- yeah. yeah, go back to 17 year old I watched one where mind the, of yours. And the you girl the- got her period because yeah. they're all like, you know, preteen and teen. So it's all about that angst and all that stuff. And it's obviously for adults. So it's, they go overboard. Mm. She gets her period. They show her like her vagina is a character talking <laughs> while she has her period. I'm like, yeah. this is this is a little too far. <laughs> it's crazy. I did laugh though. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's all fair game I, at that point. Yeah, They're I did think it was hilarious. Characterizing everything. Are you? Are either one of you paying attention to how well it's doing? Like, do you know? Like, do you guys look that stuff up when you when you get into a show like that? I don't know, but I mean, they went four seasons. Yeah, it should be doing say, well yeah. if it's if fourth season. Is it I'm on sure. that one already? I believe so. Doug, can you look that up? Tell me how they're doing. I'm curious to how that how that show is doing. I think if I was, I mean, I think it's hilarious already. So I kind of drop. I haven't. I'm not current on the seasons. <laughs> yeah. But if there's nothing on TV and I'm in that mood where like I don't need to like watch watch it like it's mm-hmm. on the background or Katrina and I are working or something, yeah, uh, it's a hilarious show for me to just kind of play in the back and it, I, all I can think about is oh my god I would have loved this if I, when I was yeah I see four seasons yeah it's like no how well is it doing though Doug that's what I want to know like how is it is it uh, rankings and how is it doing as far as like views it feels like each each season they double down and they they go even more graphic. yes that's it yes it gets worse and worse yeah I'm like whoa yeah but it's I, at the same time, too, though, 
you you have to appreciate they they cover these really t- these edgy topics that are flying through seventeen year old kids' heads. Yeah. You can't tell me like when you watch all that stuff, okay? Well, it's, that's why it's graphic. Half, half of it's funny because it's true, right? That, and that's also what makes it good is mm-hmm. that you know a lot of people aren't having those conversations with their teenage kids, and those that's what's going through I their mind. The hormone monsters are, are legit, uh, epic, though. epic. Like that's for sure what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. when you're a, a yeah. boy, teenage boy, right? Totally having a conversation with yourself oh, like man. that, right? Hey, yeah. it's, hey, did you guys see uh, who at, uh, as Trump? Left office, he pardoned a few people. See who he pardoned? Yeah, no, little, little Wayne. <laughs> yeah, <dude>. so <laughs> awesome. I'm a big Little Wayne fan. Why, so I was dude? all for it. I was, like, I was hoping he would pardon Edward Snowden or just leave in a blaze of glory. You yeah. know, just just pardon these. No, fucking Little Wayne. Little yeah. Wayne. I don't know. I don't know. Little Wayne was in jail. What was his problem? Either did I. I don't know what it's from. Probably I don't know. Probably driving under the influence. Something around those. I, <laughs> I, I, Wayne, that would be that my guess. I actually, looked that up, Doug, because I was really curious about that. Sorry, I'm like bouncing you all over the place. You failed the big mouth thing. Let's try the Little Wayne. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that so that one like letter that he sent uh, to Biden that had to be a joke, right? That was that was. Oh, think there says, was any? I don't like, know. I hope that's true because authenticity I think, behind that that is the ultimate troll for what is it? Oh wow, I didn't know that he faced up to ten years in federal prison after he pleaded guilty to illegal gun possession. Mm. Wow. So he had he had and it, because he got charged because he had a uh, prior. prior criminal possessions of firearm and ammunition. Wow. So I guess he got hooked up. Oh yeah. I mean 10 years that's that's messed up. So that, that is crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I, I don't mean, know how far in he was. Though. I tell you what, man. I know when people say that, you know, celebrities get treated special, I don't I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't know, it's so weird. <laughs> yeah, no clue, right? Yeah. yeah Cuz I'm sure that's what you happened. Don't, you don't see a lot of examples. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure if he wasn't a famous rapper, that it still would happen. Oh, yeah. That guy. <laughs> that guy with all the writing on his face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to pardon him. <laughs> let's, let's pardon that, that kid right there. Yeah, we need him. <laughs> Who were the other ones? I didn't know who the other ones were at all. Uh, there was four, oh, right? There was another dude. I uh, can't remember his name. Something something black or... Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. What was the... Uh, pull it up, Doug. Let's I see who they know, are. The popular we're, with the kids we're making, we're making Doug really work this morning. Yeah, his fingers are flying. We need, yeah. your, we need your help, Doug. Yeah. Over there. I mean, what would you do with... If you if you could just pardon anybody, right, when you bounce, what would you do? <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Like like you said, I think it would be some of those... Uh, like I'm letting Snowden all... And, and, and the other guy... What was his name? The I'm letting one? all the marijuana people the WikiLeaks. Out. That's such a bullshit. That's bullshit. I'm yeah. letting all the marijuana. Anybody who people went out. to jail for weed. Yeah, if you went to jail for weed, seriously, well, yeah. you need to get out. Yeah, like, I'm, let, I'm letting them all out. Yeah, keep going down, Doug. It was uh, it wasn't any of those guys. That's a, that's a decent amount of people. Oh, I thought it was only four. No, it was only four that anybody cared about. Really? Yeah, everybody else, uh, they nobody really talked about. Looks like there's quite a bit there. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I think Joe Exotic should have got part of. That's what I think. I think that would have been hilarious. Oh yeah, I forgot he was in jail. That would be smart. Yeah. yeah. Just a, so what? So Joe what's exotic. your? What is your theory? Okay, I want to hear you because we were talking off air a little bit, and I want to get it on air so you can hear your predictions. What is your predictions for the Orange Man post? You know, presidency. What gets, is he? What is he going to go do? He's going to get sponsored by Cheetos. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah gonna, for sure. <laughs> stupid. No. Yeah. What do you think is he, is he gonna is he going to lay down completely? Is nope. he gonna go after money and start his own He's network? Do his is own he, Fox network competitor, thing. or is he just gonna just try and shake shit up and here's disrupt? The, here's the three things that I think he'll do, and uh, is so long as he's not like uh, straight up, you know, impeached. Uh, I think he'll. Oh, that's run still for- on the table. Yeah, they have to like it has to get. Um, oh, I thought once he was the Senate out, has to confirm. Oh, I thought they had to do that before he left, so mm-hmm. they still can impeach him after think, he's gone. I think so. What the I, fuck I, is that? Well, because here's why: because if they do that, he can never run for president. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. And that's the fear, right? So either he starts his own political party, which there's been rumors about this. I don't but, understand why that's a fear. If he lost the the first time of, of voting around, like all of a sudden that he would get it four years later, because he's obviously got a, a decent amount of supporters, and uh, he ter- he terrifies the both sides because of his rhetoric mm-hmm. um, and his ability to shake things up. Right. Okay, so, so go back to what, sorry, I interrupted you. What are what are your what are your three? So theories? starts his own political party, which would be crazy. Which they came out and said already that he might do. Yeah, or he's called going the Patriot to- Party. Um, so if that, yeah, whatever. That is that sound, not is that not considered conservative? What is that? It sounds very radical, nas- very it, nationalist. I was gonna say, is that radical right? I don't know. It sounds very <laughs> nationalist to me. But I mean, that would ensure the Republicans never win again because I'm sure he pull he pull a shit ton of votes from them. None of the Democrats would switch over to his side. So there be could be that, or he could run for Senate in Florida and then uh, be a senator and then run for president afterwards. Okay, why Florida, not somewhere else? He lives in Florida now. 
Oh, okay. And oh, he has a good that. chance of winning in Florida. Uh, Florida supported him. Remember, they went. Yeah, Florida yeah, went oh, to him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the third option, which I think is the most likely, is that he would uh, uh, start his own news network. That's what I think. That's what I think. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that, he, that was his whole war in the beginning. It was like just like you know fake news and everything else, like trying to put out whatever. I he, mean, it, it plays to that, doesn't it? Yeah, like I just feel like he set himself up the entire time for that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a layup for him. As Trump far as news being, always Trump true. News, yes, <laughs> <laughs> everything else is fake. <laughs> fake yeah. news, super objective truth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what does QAnon say, right? Yeah. 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 They still think he's got a chance. So, uh, oh, yeah. I see those memes are hella funny oh, too. Oh God, dude. sitting around still waiting for him to do something yeah. for his forty yeah. chess move. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's over. Something's gonna happen. Yeah, I yeah. know it's gonna happen. I don't know. It's, this is <laughs> all. JFK Jr. might be coming back. You know, I, it's, I it's, know uh, that was a thing, right? Yeah, there was so many. Uh, like I, I spent literally like two seconds reading a lot of that back back when all this stuff was going on, and I was like, wow, they have some pretty radical ideas dude if you are into like political conspiracies just look into the kennedys like that right there is just I mean, oh yeah how many of them died two assassinated one on accident in a plane and i mean just come on yeah didn't one die in a ski accident too uh just a lot of them like random shit yeah you know it's two not so random so two strange shot. yeah it's weird yeah i've never looked into that actually yeah, uh, yeah. look into it adam <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And you won't sleep. That's, really? Oh, yeah. That's oh, like the wow. famous catchphrase. Look into uh, it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, for every I'm over all the politics stuff. I'm on, I'm on to my sports, dude. Warriors are back. We're playing good basketball. It's like I don't have time for all that other bullshit. Did they right win now. again? They did. Yeah, who did they, they, they play this time? I mean, we played the Spurs, but it was So what's what I love is like- uh, Spurs are from Texas. That's right. That's a good guess. Wow. wow. San That's Antonio. A, I mean, it's a spur. I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> where else is it going to be from? I mean, it could be yeah, Oklahoma. It could be, be a lot of other places, New Mexico. Right? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, spur doesn't I just guess you're right. <laughs> other <laughs> options. You, know, well, you think yeah. that's the only place cows yeah. and yeah. horses Cowboys are, from? are, are yeah, in other states, too. <laughs> we even have them here in California. We do have them here <laughs> yeah, in California. it's weird. <laughs> I knew that when I worked in Salinas. There were cowboys there. Yes, there is. Actually, that's a big rodeo there. Across the street from the gym I manage. Oh, is it? Yeah, the 24 on- It's one of the bigger ones, too. You know that? The 24 on North Main Street, that's where my, that's the, the location that I'm at. 24 Fitness doesn't own that anymore, by the way. But I was there across the street was the rodeo. And when the rodeo was going on, it was like big, big deal, dude. Oh, dude. It was a bull big deal. riding. Uh, one of my friends uh, in high school like was a bull rider. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like, he has like a death wish. And he'd come back with just bruises and like his arm was broken. And just like, it was every time he came back with an injury. That's the, the, the one thing I, I, this is probably the one sport I understand the least. Like, and I don't mean by understand the rules. Like, I don't know why. Because I can't think of like more guaranteed way to get hurt. You yeah. Know what I mean? Well, it's it, it's like a total adrenaline rush. You know, it's got to be like where they just like are stuck in there and they have no idea what's going to happen. Dude, oh, for sure. People who don't like who've never been around a bull or seen what they can do have no idea how strong oh, a bull is. You ever seen those videos of bulls? One ton of just like muscle mass. You're, yeah. You ever seen those videos of bulls like where they do the running, the, what do they call it? The running of the bulls or whatever. Mm, yeah. And then like there was one video where- like, Oh, and they just launch people. Like, not just with their people. Head. It, yeah. One got into a car. Didn't what, it was did, flipping. It was moving the car around like it was a nothing. Oh, yeah. Justin, oh, yeah. didn't Ronnie go do that? Didn't he run with the bulls? Did he? I know that was on his bucket list oh, to go do God. that. Oh, my God. What a maniac. Yeah, I think he did. I think we had a buddy that ran with the bulls. What and it, what's the a thing? maniac. What's your goal is to hit him with like a like a rolled up paper? Yeah. That's how you're supposed to you're supposed to touch him. Well, he was into CrossFit, so it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Stupid. Yeah, next thing hey, I looked go. up a, a, a workout like calorie burning study. Mm. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. yeah. So sex burns on average 3.6 calories per minute. Wow. Yeah, so that's a good uh, six six to eight calories. Yeah. I know. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. Are you watching me again? Uh, Are you watching right. me again, guys? Hey, Adam's like, Adam's like Katrina. The least amount of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most amount of results yeah. right here. One, two, three. Okay. That's my motto. Uh, three calories. Uh, God. Get out of here. Uh, no, that's, three points. I want to see somebody, yeah, literally. Like, well, that's, a, that's a double up. That's, that a, that's a double up, right? So uh, I would say most people's baseline's around three kilocal three to four kilocals per minute when you're just kind of at rest or moving around. So, no way. Yeah, yeah. So it's only 0. 0.6 more calories than no, the rest? No, I think it means 3.6 more. Oh, on addition. That's my guess, right? So if you were to look at like well, uh, so that's two hundred. That's two hundred sixteen calories okay. an hour. Yeah. Doesn't sound like that much, though, does yeah. it? 
No, two se- that's what I'm saying. You could walk. If you walked on a treadmill, it would jump well, up. I to guess that that's one. how other people have sex. Yeah, it was, I, I could challenge that. Yeah, like how hard your thrust. No, yeah, it's like, it's not high at all. I remember when uh, I remember like tracking you, all this. No, you did. Yes, it. I did. You were a bodybuilder. Yes, I did. Absolutely. <laughs> Come on, I was a nerdy trainer in my twenties. You better believe I. Well, that train. was the awkward conversation because remember when we we had that the body bug and all that kind of stuff, and then you'd you'd evaluate this with oh, your client. Yes. And then you'd see the nighttime activity. Yes. And you'd see these spikes, and like, be what like, "What are you doing there? Oh, for like hey. fifteen minutes." Like, it's like you're having a good time little, right here, yeah, and then yeah, they, yeah. they blush. You yeah. know, and you're just like that happened. That happened right. multiple times with me with clients. Yeah. So, and it's not it's not very much at all. You'd be your you know you'd how many be, calories you burn? Uh, just like an extra fifty or so. Wow. Yeah, it's not a lot, dude. It's not. I mean, you'd be better off uh, sweeping your kitchen floor. <laughs> wow. Yeah, unfortunately, that's because you, you make love, and that's like I mean, that's putting work in too. That's not like just laying there either. What's, What's that? Say? What's yeah, that what are you doing there, Adam? Hmm. I dug. I'm just looking at how many minutes there are in a day. So it'd be a a little, probably about one calorie a minute or maybe more depending on how big you are. What do you mean? Just your your burn, your daily burn. That's not right. Size matters, Doug. That's not even close to right. It's way closer to three. Three? Yeah, yeah. It's way closer. But there's 1,440 minutes in a day, so you multiply that by three. That's how many calories you're burning. Well, it can't be right. No, no, no. Yeah, Maybe because sleep doesn't count as much. Well, yes. When you're at complete rest, right? When you're mm-hmm. asleep, like you drop down to like two, right? So, or 1.5 to two range. But when you're awake and alert, just fidgeting or moving, you'll be around three. You know, they do pay attention start- to your, you, know, you guys have Fitbit or you have your Apple watch. It does that, yeah. doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. You, you can look at how many kilocalories. You know, they did a, um, a study on that a long time ago where they were trying to see like uh, differences in calorie burn with people who are sedentary. And they'd see these big differences in individuals and they're trying to figure out what was the difference? Mm. And it was fidgeting. Mm. Yes. People who like fidget and, you know, kind of tap their fingers or whatever. So this is my theory on why I have a, you know, quote unquote, faster metabolism. It's just that. Like, I'm very animated with my... So Katrina used to get all pissed off, right? When we used to, like, compete with our Fitbit, like how much we move. Mm. Uh. And she would do, like, the exact same thing as me, but I would register way more calorie burn. Of course, I'm bigger, right? But even my steps and movement... Because I'm more animated, I fidget and I'm tapping my hands and I'm always well, tapping especially my foot. if it's on your wrist, like and you're moving right. your hands like a lot more that that'll you know register well, a lot more steps. And so, what the pushback I'd get from people is that oh that that's got to make it so inaccurate. But the truth is that's actually and I've read that before that that's like one of the main. The, well, if you add it up all day, yeah. every day for a month. It's going to make a, a bit of a difference. Yeah, so isn't it? restless yeah. leg syndrome actually it's is to your benefit. It makes huh? a way bigger difference than you realize. It makes a big, big difference. So what does it say? Doug pulled up Healthline here. I think he's trying to prove you wrong. I know he's trying to, but <laughs> it's okay. I've, I've like looked at the data on, on uh, the, these tools for a it long says, time. It's according to Healthline, a person who weighs 115, 150 pounds might burn 46 calories an hour or between 322 and 414 calories a night. And a person who weighs 185 pounds might burn around 56 calories or between 392 and 504 calories for a full night of sleep. I think I'm right. Yeah. You know know what's interesting about this? uh, uh, That's an average person, too, who has, like, no muscle mass on their body, whatever. Like, you you add muscle and your body is burning when you're at rest a lot faster, And and you know what's funny? It's closer to three, I promise you. And here's the thing, too. You hear all this, right? So, like, oh, you don't burn that many calories because you're not moving. What if I don't go to bed and I stay up later and I move? That'll help me burn body fat. What mm-hmm. this doesn't account for are the hormonal effects on the body. Is your body trying to build muscle? Is the are the hormones right. because your stress hormones are so high trying to conserve energy? I just read mm-hmm. uh, a statistic that said that new parents of newborns mm-hmm. lose on average. You ready for this? Six months of sleep in the first two years of their child's life. So Ooh. the total of six months of sleep between the parents is I lost. Totally believe it. Over the first two years, that's probably wow. why you know a lot of times they look like they age ten years in that one. Yeah, year, you yeah. know, my poor wife. She's <laughs> oh. Because like five and a half of those months are her. Yeah, my my whole like front skunk streak. I I, I blame on my kids. Oh uh, wait, yeah. you have that? You have a skunk streak in your hair? Yeah, bro. You know, it's right here. It, the whole thing's white. What are you talking about? Well, now. Oh, before. Yeah, yeah. that you was just where went, it started. You just went white down the middle. You just went. Whoosh, I thought, like it looked, I, thought, I thought it looked cool though. Yeah, mm. yeah, it was. A good you look. remember it? Yeah, oh, well, of course. No, I remember. I had him when he was like twenty four. Mm. How how young were you when you were out of college? Yeah, it had to be around 24, 25. Yeah, so he was a baby when dude. I came. Yeah. He was a little chunky Back baby. Came Bay Area. <laughs> <laughs> little chunky baby. I had real chubby cheeks. I got stuff a lot of nuts in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him. Who's you want to hire me? Who's this cute little chunky baby yeah. coming to work for me right now? <laughs> I like fitness. <laughs> <laughs> he 
<laughs> you know? Yeah, I was ready. I saw pictures of him. He looked great. No, he did. He was he all did. lean. Nah, bro, I, was little, I was chunky. I'll admit it. Yeah. I was a little chunkster. Well, you know you weren't. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's because after <laughs> I was like, uh, my whole like athletic career, all that stuff, like I just like, there was two years of, of drinking beer and, uh, you know, not going as hard as I was going in terms of being in the gym. So, yeah, dude, I came in a little chunkster. He looked good still. But he crushed. I, he looked good still. But I, I, just, I like to fuck with him. He yeah, it's still. hard to talk shit to somebody who could just fucking just run circles around you, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. it is. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing. It's hard. Yeah. The guy, he moves like yeah. he weighs 120 yeah, pounds. Yeah, yeah. This know, is like graduated college and all that. You know. No, that's oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> college dropout that you, that you worked for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a... This is a who's what, keeping score? For? Yeah, yeah, who's keeping score? <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> he, yeah. he said he was responsible for all your success, Adam. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it's a good true. time. So that yeah. was a long time ago. It yeah. was, dude. Holy yeah, up, right? I think when I first met Doug, I must have been in my early 30s. Yeah, that's probably true. I was about 30, probably 33. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe thirty-two, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy that means cow. that means Justin and I go back almost fifteen years. Is that right? Am I doing my uh-huh. math right? Yeah, carry, I don't know. Let me see. Carry the one. I felt yeah. like we've had a really long relationship. You know? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Really. fifteen, a lot sixteen of ups years. and downs. So how long are you? So how long are you Doug go back? So you guys go back to what age? I was probably. I think I was thirty-three. So that gives us a good nine years or so. Mm-hmm. Of okay. uh, no, yeah, almost nine years probably. Together, oh, yeah. So, no. Doug, how old are you then? So, let's see. If I was like thirty, now we're more committed. Were you really? Mm-hmm. God damn! I don't yeah. understand how the hell you look the way you do right now. This doesn't make any sense to me. He just we takes don't care talk of himself. About that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he takes He's, a bath. I'm sure, and... we'll do like uh, you know a YouTube episode just on that. We're gonna oh, figure it we ta- out. Have we talked about it on the show yet? Have we told our audience? I don't that? think so. That's no. why I want to try and bring it up. No, I'm glad you did bring that up. So Eli's it's live now, right? So it's on the Mind Pump TV. channel. You get to see behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if we continue this on. I think we're gonna do at least a season of it. See how the audience receives it. But yeah. it's uh, on the YouTube channel. Mm. Yeah, yeah, go check it out. Yeah, let us know because that's one of those things. It was fun doing it, and we think it's good, but you know, we we need to know. Like, really, if it is good, then let us know. Are you, uh, Doug? Out of all the supplements in the back, because I know. Okay, so besides me, you're the you're the 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 other supplement uh, whore in the I guess in the group. So I couldn't think of another <laughs> wow. word. I swear to God, I still I don't know why that word <laughs> pretty doing. nicely there. I don't know. I don't, um, know. I don't know another word. Either. Of all the supplements <laughs> that in the back, which ones do you use? Uh, I see you using the green juice uh, quite a bit. Is that mm-hmm. what else? What are the other ones that you use a lot the most? Organifi uh, protein, the plant protein. Okay. Uh, just trying to think of all the ones we have. We've got so many. Ned, Ned for sure. Yeah. The sleep. Ned. Oh, you're using the sleep a lot? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm writing this down because, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this guy <laughs> it doesn't age. Your telomeres are so long. Yeah. yeah. What do you use the most, though, out of everything, would you say? Of all, all of the products that yeah. we represent? Yeah. Definitely the Ned is the thing I go to quite frequently. Oh, interesting. Sure. Yeah. I didn't know that about mm-hmm. you. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. What about you, Justin? What is your like go-to? Out of everything, we because we have so much stuff now. Yeah. What do you use the most? Um, it depends. Cause like, uh, for now I, I do a lot of the Legion whey protein in the morning, uh, for shakes. And then I'll do the Ned sleep at night. Uh, that's a definite go-to for that. And then I've been trying, I'm on and off with the juve light. Uh, I've been trying to incorporate that more. So that's one of those that I'm like actively trying to introduce more in my everyday routine. And you cover everything. Yeah. I do it all, but I, I probably most consistently will use the, uh, I like the green juice and I use that all the time. So I go in the back and I'll mix them up and drink it because I just feel good Yeah. Uh, when I drink it. I do pure all the time. That's another and, one. Uh, and then the other one's pure. Yeah. yeah so that's one of my favorites. Yeah. So those are the ones I use probably the most, cons- aside from my staples, which are like, you know, cod liver oil and vitamin D and that kind of stuff. You know, you brought up the, the Legion way. You know, I've been i'm having to go back now and and go back to rotating the organify in versus just the the legion way mm. i love the their way and so what i've noticed though if i have you know either the the way in the morning and or another like serving of dairy it has, it upsets me if i've done that like two or three days in a row where if i just like a mild dairy intolerance yeah just real mild like all, and only when i kind of overdo it in mm-hmm. a day like if i do two whey shakes or bars or something and then on top of that have like milk in my you know magic spoon cereal or something then i notice i'm upset or my stool is off mm. where if i just make a habit of like every other time i do a shake i do it with the organifi mm-hmm. vegan protein i know a huge difference on my gut. There's something that yeah. there's something to be said about that about rotating uh, protein sources because it's usually proteins that you might develop an intolerance to, 
And if you have any gut inflammation, I think the more you're exposed, I know Paul Chex talks about this all the time, the more you're exposed to the same kind of protein, the mm -hmm. more likely you are to develop an intolerance to it. And so rotating um, you know, seems to be have some validity. I, I do that. I do that with food. Yeah. I had now for me dairy. I can't do ever. So I, I don't have a. I have a huge intolerance to dairy. Yeah. So I can't do any dairy. Yeah, protein you can't whatsoever. do whey at all. I yeah. can. No. <clears throat> I can live off of dairy, meat, and coffee. I know you tell yourself well, that. Dairy, yeah. meat, coffee. <laughs> That's what I know. I <laughs> He's like, this guy is so funny. It's like every time I hear when he lists things, I'm like, oh, Jesus, there's more dairy. There's yeah. more dairy. Yeah. <laughs> a One day a doctor will be like, you can't have dairy. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna bring it back to the to the Mongols, dude. Okay. <laughs> you're, yeah. Now you're Mongolian. I'm, I got some Mongolian gene in there. So well, the thing that I'm, I'm most like, I what I don't know about myself is, did I? Has it always been this way? And I, I was just less aware. Like, was I just not paying attention to my stool and bowel movements and things like that? And maybe I always had a little bit of an intolerance to the way and and into dairy products, or is it? As I've gotten older, things I, change with age, dude. I know, I know. I know you fight that. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I, he 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 denies it because I still I, being completely transparent with the audience. I, even though I know this, again, why it's confirmed is because you know I was I was talking just like a couple years ago again about when I was used because I when I'm really consistent is when I'm probably using the protein shakes the most. And I was using the the whey before uh, consistently and then had to do this with mm -hmm. the Organifi. And then I do it again. I go right back because I like the taste of whey better. Whey protein. Whey mixes very easily. Uh, yes. Whey tastes better than a vegan protein, but my, my it just agrees. With I will say this, though. I mean, and this is just, not just because we're sponsored. Uh, Organifi's vegan protein is the best tasting. Yeah. No, no. I'll, because 100%. The, yeah. Vegan proteins almost always taste terrible. Almost always, they mm -hmm. taste like like you could tell. It tastes like you. Mowed they the have lawn. a they have a okay. So and here's I don't know if this is a hack or what, but like when I do Organifi, I like to make my fruit smoothies. If I do uh, whey, I make like sweeter stuff, like peanut butter, chocolate, Nutella stuff. Actually, it's not a bad. It's not because bad. the the vegan proteins to me have a little bit of a bite to it or bitterness to it, mm. so it goes really well with strawberries and blueberries and but and like fruit. And then if I do something that's more savory, where I'm doing peanut butter or Nutella or something like that, yeah, you throw Nutella in your shakes. Yeah, when I'm like not trying to lose, if it's like game time. Oh my god, absolutely! That sounds amazing. It doesn't take one tablespoon of Nutella in a peanut butter banana smoothie is like heaven, bro. And it's not like a crazy. It's like. Uh, I want to say 90 calories for that, Damn. and it just sweetens it up nice. You guys would have hated the shakes I made back in the day when I was a kid. Just uh, gross. Hated them. Yeah. It was like- I did that too. I was on a kick oh, for doing bro, gro it was, gross, uh, weird shit for oh, a while. Oh, dude. I made, a, I made a tuna fish shake. I made oh, a chicken breast oh, man. shake. No. It, it was all about- it's Just punishment. Liquify so I could get this in my- Yeah. In my gullet, you yeah. know what I mean. That's Isn't it. it funny too when you're a kid like that? You do that, and then like five yes. minutes later, you're on the toilet. Like, I can't, oh yeah. I always wonder, like now looking back, like how, how many did, gains I lost. Yeah, exactly. how, yeah. How much did I actually absorb from Bro, that? Bro, I used just to go right through. I me? would have the, the 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 blender in my hand. My mom had this like gangster blender that we'd make sauce with, right? So it was like it was powerful, and I'd make my shakes in there, and it was like thick because of all the scoops of whatever I put in there, and I'd sit over the sink. And I, it was like a, it was like uh, it was like a, I did it. I was doing a set of squats. Like that's how I, I treated. I had to pound it, and then I'd sit <laughs> on the bracing it. It's like, oh no! <laughs> and then for at least fifteen to twenty minutes, I'd sit in my dad's recliner, and I, I would just sit very still because sudden movements would, could cause me to throw. Oh up. yeah! And I'd be like, I gotta wait for this. This oh, I drink feeling. those raw eggs in there, and then I, you know, peanut butter, everything else that like savory as I could throw in there, and then I'd be in class. <laughs> pepperoni. And just my stomach was so yeah, pepperoni, <laughs> like just everything like left over pizza throw it in there and i'm in class and my stomach was so loud that like everybody <laughs> just would stop and they're looking around and i'm like trying to like look around too like it's not me and then i would blast one i thought exactly <laughs> i thought that you know i almost <laughs> this is how fucked up it was i thought having really really stinky farts was like you're, you're, eating you're doing it right you're on the right <laughs> you're on the right track. yeah like oh wait that didn't smell i need more protein <laughs> that's how messed up yeah, it was yeah. I know. I'm yeah, with you punishment First question is from Mitch Pappas. How would you help someone who loves to train in the gym six times per week move to a three times per week routine? You can, okay, so I'm assuming you're talking about like a full body workout or three days a week is when you lift kind of hard and heavy. That doesn't mean you can't go to the gym on the other days. It just means do other stuff. So you can go to the gym and you can work on 
a light pump. You can work on range of motion, mm -hmm. mobility. In fact, some of the best results I ever got with myself and with clients were when I trained people and they worked out with me with the hard workouts two or three days a week. But then they also went to the gym on their own and just kind of touched areas of their body, uh, you know, with, with lighter exercise, isolation movements, getting a squeeze, getting a burn, um, or again, doing other stuff like yoga, mobility. Like this is a, this is great to stay active, um, all the time. You, what you don't want to do necessarily, very few people that can do this is lift hard and heavy six days a week. There, some people can do this, but it's pretty rare that most that anybody can do this long term and not start suffering consequences. Well, it's not sustainable. And even if you can do it, doesn't mean you should do it either. Keep that in mind. So just because somebody you know can train six days a week and thinks there's still a better uh, you know approach to getting like you want to scale to that, you mm -hmm. still would start off two or three times, then work to four, then work to five, then work to six. If you're actually doing like a, a serious uh, lift six days a week, I definitely wouldn't go there right away. Sometimes I feel like this is our fault, right? When we get questions like this because we talk so much about. Uh, the benefits of just training two to three times a week, full body, and that's mm -hmm. all you need. And a lot of people overtrain, and we've been, we've kind of poo pooed the no days off shit, all that stuff. So sometimes I feel like we get questions like this because we've promoted that message so much. But if you <clears throat> if you've been listening to the podcast uh, since the beginning, um, I used to talk a lot about being the out of us, the guy who was in the gym seven days a week, especially mm -hmm. during competing times, and. I loved that, and I liked the idea of every day because it was this, uh, I knew that was my time, right? This is my time that I go and train. It's just you change it and you modify it. Mm -hmm. I don't go to the gym seven days a week and like crush it. I maybe crush it three days out of the week, and then the other three or four days is either, like you said, Sal, like for me, a lot of times it was abs and calves, like touching up on muscle groups that I was trying to bring up or work on or doing mobility stuff, like, or range of motion, body weight type things, like, you know, or just going there and doing like a, a nice long walk for an hour. Like sometimes it looked like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I am. <clears throat> I'm not against somebody going to the gym. In fact, I, I see a lot of value in that. Like, if you're a person, like I do better that way, right? If I just, if I have a routine or a, a time in my day, I'm consistent with every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm more likely to stick to it versus if I say, oh, I only got to get to the gym three days this week, oh, and whatever three days works, because then it gets really easy. To be like, oh, you know what? I'm busy today. Mm -hmm. I'll do it tomorrow. Like, I'll get, I'll get tomorrow. Oh, then tomorrow comes. It's like it's okay. I still got Friday and Saturday. I can get one day in. So. So I get when uh, when people want to be in there six, seven days a week, nothing wrong with that. Just modify your intensity. Yeah, the misconception is that the days in between, you're not doing anything. Like you're just like avoiding exercise, you're avoiding movement, uh, you're quote unquote resting the, you know, the whole day uh, besides going to work. No, that's not the case. Like, uh, you know, to, to fully recover, you know, you need that blood flow. You need that, uh, you know, uh, that, that signal to, to stay alive. And so just by just lowering the intensity or, you know, focusing on a different, um, you know, aspects of, of training is, is, you know, we encourage that. It's just like the, the three day a week thing is something that we're kind of, you know, passionate about because doing full body workouts, you know, that, that allows you to then recover and then come back in with adequate amount of energy to, you know, to do a good job in your next workout. Next question is from David GTZ09. What are some signs that someone may be doing too much volume and what should they do if that's the case? All right. So this is a good question because sometimes it can be hard to identify that it's that you're doing too much. Now, one of the signs may be that you're not progressing. But sometimes that means you're not doing enough, uh, right? Or it means your diet is off and it's not necessarily that you're doing too much. So uh, let's throw some more stuff on top of that. Now, for me, one of the, the number one ways I know that I'm doing too much joints. is- Yeah, I start to feel it at the muscle insertions or at the joints. So I start to be sore in areas kind of chronically, like, ah, oh, my shoulder's bothering me a little bit or yeah, my bicep- Yeah, waking at, up with it. Yeah, my bicep and my elbow, right? That's where I'll feel it sometimes or I'll find that I need to warm up longer- to loosen myself up uh, for my workout. Um, lack of sleep. I know when I push it too hard, my sleep starts to suffer, and I actually find myself in the middle in the night waking up often. Um, my ability to regulate my body temperature starts to get a little worse, so I start mm -hmm. to notice that I'm cold more often, uh, or maybe I'm less tolerant to heat. So it's hot outside, and I go outside, and it feels like it's just too hot. So essentially, I just I can tell my body is too stressed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fatigue throughout the day. Like these are things you want to pay attention to um, that might be telling you that you're just you're just going too hard. Now, what do you do if that's the case? Uh, well, number one, uh, right away, reduce the intensity and reduce the volume of your workouts. If it's real bad, you might even want to take off 
a few days, three to four days. Well, that's uh, a good way to test it, right? We yeah. just we, we shared that we were talking. Was it off air or were we on? No, air? it was on. It was on the podcast. Okay, yeah, we talked about this, right? We we came out the gates and we were we were definitely, or I was for sure. Uh, overtraining a bit, and the way I always know, like let's say, like my like my joints weren't really quite talking to me yet, so it was I hadn't gotten that bad because I wasn't really pushing the weight really heavy, but my volume was high. And the way I knew that I was pushing it was I took four days off in a row. It was in Vegas, and it just kind of worked out that way. It was I was like, ah, I'm visiting with family, we have business stuff going on. Like I've been really consistent. My body probably needs four days off. I took four days off. <clears throat> I came back to the gym and felt amazing. I felt the next two workouts, I felt stronger than I did the previous two weeks. To me, that's always an indicator that I was I was overreaching or my volume was too high or intensity. That and or I'm not putting the the work in for like mobility and recovery, right? So sometimes I I, I uh, challenge my own my own thinking when it comes to this. Like, okay, am I really just pushing too much volume right now, or? Have I prioritized building muscle so much and building strength so much that I have neglected my mobility work? And so sometimes it can be a uh, one or the other or a combination of both. Yeah. I, you know, here's some other stuff you can do. Um, you know, normally trying to really reduce inflammation. I mean, if you're healthy, not necessarily a strategy you need to take advantage of. But when you're in this particular case, um, ma managing inflammation can actually help because your inflammation is really high and you might want to bring it down a little, especially if you feel your joints and things that will stiff and sore. So this is where a cold shower, a cold dip might help. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is where cannabinoids for me are very effective. So this is where I'll use like the Ned hemp oil and I'll use it once or twice a day. When I find that I feel like I'm a little overtrained, I'll cut the intensity, cut the volume. I'll start utilizing the hemp oil on a more regular basis. And that gets me there faster. <laughs> it gets me to the point where I feel like I can get back to my workouts a little faster. Now, I wouldn't use it as a recovery aid normally because you want normal inflammation that triggers muscle growth and stuff. This is just when I'm starting to feel like I'm a little overtrained is when I kind of, you know, throw that in. And then, you know, here's a big one. Like Justin's really big on movement to help facilitate recovery. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. a great, like, here's the thing. Taking days off is great, but usually you don't need to take days off. You just need to start going a lot easier and folk, do mobility work, you know, yeah. do that kind of stuff for the joints and then watch how much faster you recover. Right. I think that if I would have, instead of just taking those four days off, if I would have spent those four days just prioritizing like yoga, mobility, self myofascial release, I think I would have felt just as good, if not better totally. on it, when I got back. Next question is from Connie Chiwa. In addition to building muscle, are there other ways to speed up the metabolism? Yeah, so that's the number one right, right. way, right? The, the most effective way. And I know there's a controversy like, oh, it doesn't burn that much more calories or whatever. Bullshit. Okay, that's total bullshit. Um, you talk to any coach, any trainer, anybody who's worked with people for longer than five years, and they'll tell you, yeah, when I get my clients to build muscle, they can eat a lot more calories and they can stay leaner mm -hmm. a lot easier. Um, so, a lot more than what the study shows. Yeah, it, it, it just, it just, that doesn't equate. Um, again, my experience is in the opposite. I mean, look, I'm sedentary most of the day. I know I lift weights for an hour, but for mostly I'm very sedentary. I still can eat. Uh, now, I, I, my, I'm definitely not burning a lot of calories through activity, but because I have so much muscle, I still can eat a lot of calories in comparison to the average person. The average person ate as many calories as I did every day, they'd be over, you know, obese or overweight. Now, so. do you think that there's other factors that, and that's why, because when they tease that out there, just measuring what, what, how much energy muscle is using when there's other factors. For example, when you're on a workout program and you're trying to build muscle and you are building muscle, it means you're probably eating better. Mm-hmm. And if you're eating better, there's a good chance that your digestion is a lot better. And so do you think that is also a factor in what we see as coaches, you know, like, oh, my client, I got him for the last three months. We've been following this plan, diet's dialed in. They've built five or six pounds of muscle. And oh, my God, they're eating 600 more calories. That doesn't line up with what the studies say about muscle. But do you think that's because there's other factors like digestion? That's, that's I, th I think it goes yeah. deeper than that, right? I think if you are – so there's a – and this is something I think we're going to start to really learn more about uh, in the future. But your our metabolism, our body has this range – of how many calories it can burn and it can it can make itself more efficient or less efficient with calories. So when your body becomes less efficient with calories, it, mm. it essentially wastes more energy. When it becomes more efficient, it literally becomes more efficient. It conserves more calories. So simply increasing your calories. Okay. So if, if somebody eats a little more, their body tends to burn more calories. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a small effect, 
But we see it. Restricting your calories uh, for long periods of time, you will start to see, even before muscle loss, you'll start to see the body start to burn a, a little less calories. I think the entire process of building muscle, sending yeah. the signal, building the muscle, eating more calories, a little bit more protein, yeah, all of being those Being properly things. recovered too, right? Sleep has to be a factor and all that for balance and hormones and everything to contribute to, you know, raising your metabolism. Like just, like you said, the entire process of, you know, uh, pursuing, uh, you know, building muscle, I'm sure, you know, all those components have a factor. Right, because hormones, are, you know, will they affect your metabolism and speed it up? I guess in the long term, you'll probably notice Notice if, if a hormone like testosterone, for example, or growth hormone starts to build muscle. Um, but really what, what it's doing is it's signaling the body to do different things with the calories you eat, right? So if, I, if my testosterone is optimal, then my body's getting a signal that uh, to build more muscle. So more of my calories that I consume are going to go to muscle. And that in turn then speeds up my well, metabolism. Well, also being healthy, right? Absolutely. We, yeah, if you're fighting yourself internally, uh, you know the, that's a lot of wasted uh, energy expended. Yeah, so here's the other a end of this. Uh, doing things that uh, make you unhealthy will can make your body want to conserve more calories. So right. speeding up your metabolism, well, okay, you brought up sleep, uh, Justin. If you get little sleep and it's shitty sleep, there's a few things that happen, we know. Number one, it does change your... Your, your cravings. We tend to crave more hyper palatable food, probably because we feel crappy and it makes us feel better in the short term. But even beyond that, right? If you're sleeping little, the body perceives that as a stress. When your body feels like it's under a lot of stress, hormone profiles change and your body wants to conserve energy when it feels stressed. Probably because for most of the time humans have been on earth, uh, if we were stressed, it probably had to do with the fact that we couldn't find food, right? That was probably one of the main sources of stress uh, for us, at least chronic stress. Right. Is that, oh, we can't find food. Mm -hmm. So the body starts to learn to conserve calories. So if you get shitty sleep all the time, what will end up happening is your body is uh, storing more calories or trying to simultaneously also trying to get you to burn less calories, eventually causing muscle loss because you know muscle is more of an expensive tissue so it's like your body's saying okay we need to become more efficient uh there's a few things we can do and then down the road it's okay let's get rid of muscle we don't need to burn as many calories this person's under, under stress so over time you start to kind of store more calories and you throw on top of that your your cravings start to change so yeah i mean you want to be healthy uh you want to get good sunlight make sure your nutrients are balanced in your body you're not lacking any nutrients you have any deficiencies um, and you know, and then again, of course, building muscle. I, I can't tell you, look, if you have worked in a gym for a while, you know, I remember after about five or six years working in gyms, I would see these people and we had name, we had, there were, there were like terms for them, like cardio bunnies, right? Was like yeah. one, one term. Mm -hmm. These were people that were consistent. They're some of the most consistent people that came to the gym. They'd come in same time every day, and they do cardio. One and hour stairmaster. Yeah, oh, one yeah. hour cardio, and then they leave. And it's you, like their religion. And you would notice that often their bodies never changed, and they would often be skinny fat. Now, you know, being a, somebody who's very involved in the gyms that I ran, I always knew my regular members. I always made it a point to talk to people. So I became friends with some of them, and I talked to them, and we talk about diet. And there were more than a couple times where these cardio kings and queens that would come in, because you'd see the guys doing it. The, yep. They'd have a little bit of the beer belly, but they're doing their cardio. And the well, girl the guy that sweats on everything. And, yeah. yeah. And I would ask them about their diet. And there were like a couple of them, more than a couple, that actually tracked their food. And I would look at their nutrition logs, and the women were eating like 1,000 calories. The guy was like you know, 1,500 calories. And yet his, he, he's, he would talk to me and say, I can't lose this last 15 pounds of body fat. I do an hour of cardio six mm -hmm. days a week, sometimes two hours of cardio. It's not coming off. I'd look at their diet and be like, well, we need to just teach your body to burn more calories. This is not, What you're doing now is maintaining your 15 pounds of body fat that you need to lose. Right. Let's switch it up. And I actually got a couple of them to change their routines to, to lift weights. And then lo and behold, the body fat you know, came off their body. Yep. Next question is from Sarah Stone. Any advice for women who want or need to eat more and put on weight, but are inundated with media telling them to eat less, do more cardio, et cetera? Turn off your media. Oh, oh thank yeah. you. You know, uh, <laughs> um, now more than ever, we have to guard our attention. And you, because it's our attention is so precious, right? We're constantly distracted by everything all the time. We're, it's never quiet, never time. To ourselves when we're doing nothing. Um, we have these phones with these media apps that are just constantly entertaining. Yeah. 
And you have to be honest with yourself. And here's the truth. It does influence your behaviors. As much as you think you're self-aware and I could read this and it's not going to affect me, mm-hmm. the truth is it, it, it does. It does either in a small amount or over time a large amount. And so the best thing you could do is go through your social media mm-hmm. and delete, stop following all stop these. Stop following idiots. I got to give a shout out to Lori Christie King. I think she does a fantastic job of, of this is literally like her directive. This is who the audience that she's, uh, you know, uh, really speaking to uh, in terms of like feeding the body and making sure that uh, you're getting adequate amount of, of of calories and and really fueling your workouts and, and building a body that you know is desirable. It's not about you know starving yourself and just doing cardio to get down in weight. I love her content. You know, this is a conversation that I was having with my aunt that I just kind of mentioned recently. Where uh, and I'm and I'm trying to rethink how I explain this or help people in this case because. I do forget sometimes we're in our little bubble where we just assume, oh man, things have changed. There's there's more women lifting weights, and mm-hmm. you know they're you know the finally everyone's getting it. It's like no, it's it's not that way at all. Actually, it's still uh, a massive uh, minority in comparison to uh, the average person, yeah. the general population. Most people are fall in this category, just like my aunt. Like I mean, and she's sharing with me the stuff that she she's drawn to Beachbody's workout. She's drawn to the articles that they post and then what they write about and the quick three day cleanse and the 30 minutes to this. And most people still are all, all drawn to that content and they want mm-hmm. the, they want the results as fast as they possibly can. And those, those types of articles uh, they're drawn to. So this is a tough battle for us, especially since for the longest time we resisted uh, marketing this way to get these people's attention. But the, the more, the longer we get into this business six years now, you know, I think to myself, like, I don't know if we're ever going to win uh, this way by us just talking on this podcast, hoping that these pe- these <laughs> these people right. find us. You know, we're going to have to find a more creative way to kind of rope them in with that type of advertising, and mm-hmm. then do a flip the script on them, and then teach them really how they're supposed to do this. Because I'm having this conversation with her, and when we're, we're actually looking over her diet, we're talking about the next thirty days, and she's telling me how she just needs to she wants to lose fifteen pounds as fast as she can, and. When I tell her, like, okay, so we, we went over everything, and she's like, okay, we're all good. She's agreed to the diet. She likes what's going on. And then I said, okay, so what I want you to do is make sure that you're you're weighing at least on a weekly basis. I would love to see daily, and I, I don't want you to lose any weight. And she looked at me like all crazy. Like, no, 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 you, this whole, I thought you put me on a plan to lose 15 pounds. And I said, well, is it just the 15 pounds on the scale that all you care about? Or is it you want to change the way your body looks? Like you want to look leaner and more defined. And you, know, and you want to lose it forever? Or? Right, right. So I tell her that. And she's like, well, yeah, yeah. I said, well, then, then the scale is not the fastest way to the better body. Sure, we can move the scale faster by doing tons of cardio and starving your body. And that will move the mm-hmm. scale faster than building muscle. Mm-hmm. But nothing will change your body faster than me getting you to eat more nutrient-dense foods that you need because when I look at your diet, you're lacking, grossly lacking protein. She was eating like 30, 40 grams of protein a day. Barely essential. She was right. barely hitting the essential Right, number. and so I'm like, you're, you're, we're, we're not feeding your body what it needs to build muscle, and then we need to prioritize strength training, and then the goal is as we're eating better and more food is to actually just maintain the scale because then I know we're, we're, we've got a nice exchange going on. If you're following what I wrote for you and you're doing everything – then I know your body's going to start to build muscle. When you are that low of protein, I bump you to where you're at now, feed you more calories, and get you training. Your your body is actually changing the fastest it possibly could. But we get so caught up in the scale and wanting to drop down and these articles and stuff that, you know, and, and it's not just women, men too, but women in particular, I think, have been targeted the the hardest in this area. And that the same advice I give to my aunt as I'm going to give to you is the actually fastest way to get your body to look the way most people are wanting it to look, which is leaner, tighter, more tone, whatever fucking advertising words you want to use. The fastest way is actually for you to build muscle, eat more calories initially, then build some strength and focus there first. And then just like I told her, give it two or three months of us being consistent. And then I may take away three to three to 500 calories and then watch your body just lean out super fast. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to circle back, like stop following these pages. It's your attention. Yeah. Uh, you know, treat it, uh, you know, treat it like gold. I mean, I, I had to do this for politics and news because I found myself getting annoyed and stressed out and worried. And so I just stopped following a bunch. I just stopped watching it. And you know what happened? 
a week. It took a it took a week, and I felt way better. Yep. Way better. The same way thing. different. And it's like, man, that had such an impact over my quality of life. Yeah, All I had it's to what do- you're taking in. You just got to like take inventory on that and be keep yourself accountable. What are you taking in uh, and find what you need to hear? Totally. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media, Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam. And also, if you'd like to read some free information on how to build a better body, sculpt your midsection, burn body fat, we have free books and guides uh, that we've made for our audience. They're very informative. They cost nothing. You can find all of them at mindpumpfree.com. It's like, why am I getting better pumps when I use... Um, it's it, it, for a long time, you know, before and during my workouts. So you're definitely getting more fluid volume because of the sodium. And, and that's a transient deal. The kidneys, again, will kind of sort that out and mm-hmm. will reestablish homeostasis. But sodium is really critical for a pump.